Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields, and thank you for taking the time to put all the likes on yesterday's video. I do appreciate that. I see that. Now, this is the spot I'm watching next, right? Off the coast of Africa for some development. Look at these big tropical waves coming off, but there is good news to pass along, and I love it to be able to pass along good news this time of year. I'm not seeing these developing in the short term, and that is a big deal. We're in the heart of hurricane season right now, the peak of it about September 10th. So just days away from the peak of hurricane season, or at least a few weeks away, and Anytime we can just kind of eat away at some of those days with no development, that is huge for this time of year. I don't root for a storm on anyone. Uh, they just tear apart livelihood. Uh, I've seen that uh, year after year. You've seen that as well. So not rooting for any hurricanes. And this is good news right here. There is going to be some development, but this is what's going on. Uh, short term, these waves come off and they're coming off a little bit more north and they're running into this dry and stable air. The air is sinking, so it's not rising. Uh, you need uh, a system or you need uh, air to rise uh, for hurricanes to develop those showers and storms to build up and of course we don't want that uh, so this is just running into this dry air there's a lot of that around over toward a Trinidad it has been so hot for example the dry conditions if you're dry we are very hot this uh, time of year so some stable air out here temporarily but I want to show you some signs of development in this video now in the bigger picture the global trade winds that's why things come off of Africa and that's why things come out of Canada this time of year and head toward parts of Europe. You see this here. That's what's left of Ernesto. Uh, it is no longer a tropical system. It is post-tropical, not tropical in nature at this point, but it is incredible kind of in the bad sense of the term of how long Ernesto did stick around. And it's actually bringing some heavier rain uh, later today as it works its way toward parts of uh, Ireland, over toward the UK, Scotland in particular where they could pick up over 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain, plus some gusty winds of 50 miles per hour, or 80 kilometers an hour with what's left, the remnants of Ernesto just tied around. It's amazing how the weather is tied together so uh, globally. Now we get back here, uh, we have a lot of hot weather. Now if we get a storm, and we had some yesterday in Belize for example, while it is drier and hotter, if you do get a storm, it could be strong. And we had some stronger storms with some very gusty winds in parts of Belize yesterday. Then we get out here in the eastern Pacific, it is very active. This right here is Gilma. This right here is going to threaten Hawaii by this weekend. Now things are related. It. When it's uh, usually active in the eastern Pacific like it is now, it's quieter on the Atlantic side and then vice versa. So that's the pattern we have now. It is quieter on the Atlantic side, right? Eastern Pacific, totally a different story. Now we have the heart of the hurricane season ahead of us. This is for the Atlantic Basin. You can see August through September, October, the busiest time of the year. There's the peak about September 10th, uh, September uh, 11th with the peak of the hurricane season. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of development just in the next three months, 84% of all named storms form. September is usually the most active month and through at least mid-October, it is usually typically active. But the good news is, as we just eat away at those days in August, that's big because we are in the uh, peak of the uh, hurricane season. I don't expect any development on the Atlantic side, at least in the short term. Let me show you that and then swing back toward the Eastern Pacific. Here's the big picture. I'll zoom down across the uh, Caribbean for us. Now watching these tropical waves coming off, but no signs of development. I mentioned that dry air, these just kind of run into that. So just kind of taking you out in time here, you see, yeah, there's going to be areas of rain that we're going to be tracking and I'll keep it. I'll keep an eye on that. This is by the weekend. Old fronts sometimes do spin up some tropical systems. So monitoring that you see right through here, could see some increased rain uh, in some spots, but here are the tropical waves that I'm watching and this is the spot to watch next. Eventually more moisture is going to build late this month into early September, so the environment will be more conducive at, at that point for some development. So let's go way out in time. This is 10 days out in time. So this is going to change. And I was showing you some of this yesterday, and you can see how it kind of changed a little bit from yesterday's video. When you go far out in time, there are going to be these areas to start to watch late this month. Still not seeing anything that is definitely a named system, but you can see a few areas of buildup of moisture in the Caribbean, especially over toward the Eastern Caribbean, and then stronger tropical waves coming off. So it is going to get more active 
active late this month, and then we'll see if anything does develop as we get into uh, early September. And over the next few days, I'll have more and more of a handle on that. Now we get over toward the Eastern Pacific. Here is Mexico, everything kind of moving away from Central America and Mexico. But sometimes you get these things that hook kind of back, and we saw that uh, last uh, hurricane season. Here's Hawaii. This here is Gilma, but this one out ahead of it uh, should become a named system and then work its way closer toward Hawaii where it has been so dry. So rain would be beneficial, but on top of it, it is so dry that that will allow the runoff to be quicker and that could lead to a big flood situation, especially over toward the uh, Big Island. So this is by the time we get into the weekend. This here is Saturday flipping over into Sunday. There could be some sort of tropical system very close to Hawaii and the Big Island. Does it stay to the south? Uh, most indications are, but uh, other indications are that it could almost move right in. And just look how active it is. This is this weekend with uh, probably three named systems in the Eastern Pacific and active in the Eastern Pacific, quieter in the Atlantic. There is that uh, correlation. Now this, here's Hawaii right here. So everything I wanted to show you this moving away from Mexico. This is that new system system that will develop and be very close to the big island of Hawaii by the time we get into the second half of the weekend. Now there are different lists of names. Uh, Ernesto, the E name that we just had in the uh, Atlantic Basin, the E name was Amelia in the Eastern Pacific. So there's a different set of names. Gilma's out there now. Hector is the next name on the list uh, for the H name on the Eastern Pacific and that should be the one uh, that will eventually impact or be very close to Hawaii by the second half of the weekend. Now short term uh, I was mentioning it is hot and a lot of us are dry, but if you do get a storm, it could be strong. Watching Belize again, all the way down through Panama. There are two tropical waves, one moving through for us in Jamaica now, one moving through the uh, Eastern Caribbean, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Lucia, Barbados, but not seeing signs of development as these tropical waves move by. They're pretty weak. They're dealing with some of that dry air. You don't see anything spinning up. This is by the time we get into tomorrow. Same thing as we get toward the end of the week and the weekend. Yes, scattered areas of storm but no development, but watching out for a few of those storms, which could give us some of those gustier winds and watching out for still some of those tropical downpours. Now, definitely settling down across parts of uh, the Atlantic region of Canada, still some rain and storms around, but Ernesto, that is a uh, long done with, but watching some old fronts and we're going to see some moisture from the south eventually pull up. There is some moisture in old front near Bermuda that will try to lift its way up toward the north, may clip us by by the time we get into Friday and uh, Newfoundland over toward the uh, Avalon Peninsula but no uh, name system. Seas, they're going to be on the uh, choppier side in a few spots, but overall, not bad for our captains out there, our mariners out there. Of course, the North Atlantic, a totally different story. Very high seas, five meters, upwards of about 20 feet, both scales on your screen here. This is today and then working into tomorrow. But you see, as we work our way through the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, especially, the Gulf has been so very quiet, so very settled, uh, especially with those uh, seas. And while, since we don't see any development, the next few days, those seas are going to stay pretty quiet. Caribbean uh, right up through the Bahamas back toward the Gulf of Mexico as we work our way into that upcoming weekend. Now, as far as rain goes, still some scattered storms. I mentioned yesterday the northern Bahamas watching out for a better chance of scattered showers and storms where if you get one, we could get over 50 millimeters of rain or two inches of rain. Uh, and this here, you see these brighter colors, Cuba, parts of Haiti, Dominican Republic, even Jamaica, we could get a passing shower or a thunderstorm. A lot of us will be dry in Jamaica, uh, say Montana. Tego Bay, we may be dry, but as we get over toward Kingston, uh, we may get some heavier storms or vice versa. So watching out for a few thunderstorms, same thing, Puerto Rico, back through the U.S. British uh, Virgin Islands, down through uh, Dominica, again, some passing showers and storms possible. In Guilla, we could see a small chance of a passing shower. We'll watch that as we work our way through uh, St. Lucia, but St. Vincent the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago on the drier side, and that means very hot weather. Use some caution with this extra heat, just a passing shower, parts of Venezuela, Guyana, and Suriname. Now some higher totals of Panama, Costa Rica, and then it just depends on where the storm set up. Guatemala, the rain chance is a little elevated and watching those scattered storms, anywhere from Honduras, uh, Nicaragua, up through uh, Belize and the uh, Yucatan of Mexico, but we get back toward Mexico City, that rain chance has been down overall. So Jamaica, uh, we're looking at an isolated shower storm today. About a 40% chance tomorrow uh, could be a strong one. Cayman Islands, our rain chance is very uh, small the next few days. Lots of sunshine and mainly dry Trinidad and Tobago would be a passing shower or a storm. Barbados, a 30 to 40% chance, 30 to 40% chance as we work our way through St. Lucia. There is that tropical wave overhead. Grenada, 
St. Vincent the Grenadines, we have that tropical wave, but there's not a lot with it, so that rain chance doesn't stay too high. Martinique, about a 40% chance, and as we swing to the north, Dominica, a passing shower will be a possibility. Same thing in Guadeloupe, a 40% chance the next few days, and right up toward Antigua and Barbuda, not a super high chance of rain, but there'll be a few passing showers. 30 to 40% chance, St. Kitts and Nevis in Montserrat. Could be a couple more passing showers with the uh, uh, tropical wave today in Guilla and St. Bart's. So let me know in the comments if you do get one, 30 to 40 percent chance St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. And we'll see some of those afternoon storms in Puerto Rico. That could lead to some flooding in a few isolated spots where we get those storms. And I mentioned a few of those could be through the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Northern Bahamas, that's where we have a better chance of rain. Mainly dry southern Bahamas and a lot of sunshine today. Turks and Caicos. Isolated showers and storms the next couple days in the Dominican Republic. We could get a pop-up one in Haiti, but so very hot. Belize, though, watching out for some of those scattered storms. Let me know in the comments location and what you're getting or, or not getting. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire generally dry. Could see a small, small chance of a passing shower about over the next uh, 24 hours. Guyana, our rain chance about 30%. And we're looking at a small 20% chance right through uh, Suriname. 30 to 40% chance of some afternoon storms as we work our way into parts of Cuba. Uh, rain chance stays elevated in parts of Costa Rica. Let me know how you're doing if you have any flooding around. Same thing in Panama, especially western Panama. Nicaragua will see some of this uh, activity. Uh, same thing in Honduras. About half and half over the next uh, couple of days with some scattered areas of rain and storms. Rain chances back up some. Guatemala and El Salvador, that means watching those river crossings. We could have some of that flooding in some uh, locations the next few days. We get back toward Mexico City. The rain chance has been down. Still a 40% chance of scattered showers and storms. About a 40% chance as we swing through the uh, Yucatan. Uh, Northern Colombia, 30 to 40% chance. 30% chance in Northern Venezuela. And watching those fronts around as we work our way toward uh, Bermuda the next few days. They may clip us by. So scattered areas of storm and of course watching the heat the Atlantic the dry air in place for now but we'll get that active period we'll start to see signs of it the next few days more so in September but we are enjoying this break right now in the tropics of course on the Pacific side watching all that activity and monitoring that uh, earthquake activity we've had some of that over the last several days in Jamaica know that kind of behind the scenes um, watching that so thank you for being part of this weather community I hope you're doing well and have a good rest of your day